there might just be a bit of a difference when it comes to the cursor sharing parameter between the cursor sharing you think's going on and the cursor sharing the database thinks is going on. We have cursor sharing set to force on our environments because of some bad apps, but we are regularly seeing SQL statements with literals in our AWR reports. Has cursor sharing been desupported or modified? As you know, cursor sharing is meant to go looking for SQL that contains literals and replace them with bind variables in order to improve the parse performance. And so the question here is, if you've got it set to force, well, how come we're seeing literals in there? Has it been desupported or changed? And the answer is no. So why are we seeing literals in our share pool uh, if we have cursor sharing equals force? We're not meant to, but there are some idiosyncrasies when it comes to cursor sharing. I'm going to set alter session cursor sharing equals force. Therefore, any literals should be replaced with binds. And let's give it a few tests. Now, I've put this comment in here, find me. There's nothing magical about that comment. It's just to make it easier to find it in the shared pool later on. So I've done select find me one star from it where employee number equals king, cursor sharing equals force. If I go look in the shared pool, it says, yep, it does exactly what it says on the box. It took that literal and replaced it with a bind variable. So, yep, cursor sharing is doing exactly what we expect. What if we have a statement now that actually contains a bind variable? So now I'm doing select find me where m greater than v1. Right, so I'm, this is a good SQL now. Cursor sharing should leave it alone. And cursor sharing does. This was find me two. And we can see that for find me two, cursor sharing did nothing. It left it alone, which is exactly what we want because it had a bind variable in it. What if we've got a literal and a bind variable. What happens there? Well, this is find me three. And as you can see, once again, cursor sharing has done what we're expecting it to do. It left the bind variable that was there already there alone, and it replaced the literal with a bind variable. So far, cursor sharing is doing what cursor sharing does. Okay, let's try now some static SQL. So now I've got static SQL in a PL SQL block. So this is find me four. Um, the reason I've had to make this a hint even though it's obviously not a valid hint, is Peel SQL has a SQL optimizer inside it, and it will remove comments from the SQL before sending it to the SQL engine in order to improve the chances of shareability. So if you just put comments in there, they get stripped out by the Peel SQL engine. So I've put it as a hint, so it gets left in there, even though it obviously is not a valid hint. So now I do select and do where find me, and we get this. So this is the first thing that we need to be aware of. Cursor sharing doesn't apply to static SQL and PL SQL. Now you might be thinking, surely that's a bug, but it makes no sense for cursor sharing to touch these SQLs because this is a static piece of SQL. It is unchanging. Even though it contains a literal, the only way this gets run more than once is if multiple people run this PL SQL block. When you think about the problem cursor sharing is meant to solve, it's when you've got thousands of different SQLs that only differ by the value of their literals. If you've coded a static piece of SQL inside a PL SQL block, then it's a, if it's a procedure, it's going to get run many, many times. It's by definition a shareable piece of SQL because it's static. It's never changing. That literal is never changing. It's just like a hard-coded constant. So that's never going to be a problem. So cursor sharing leaves it alone. What if we have a dynamic piece of SQL inside a PL SQL block. So this is just a string now that's being sent from PL SQL over to the SQL engine. This is find me five. And cursor sharing does what you'd expect. Even though it's coming from PL SQL because it's dynamic SQL, this is an SQL that could be built up from on the fly, therefore contain lots and lots of different literals. And so cursor sharing kicks in as you'd expect and replaces it with a bind variable. Let's now look at this one, a dynamic piece of SQL that contains a bind variable and a literal. We saw before that when we ran that in isolation, cursor sharing replaced the literal. This is dynamic SQL. And this is probably where our original question has come into being. Even if it's dynamic SQL, if there is a bind variable in there, cursor sharing will not go looking for any other literals to replace. Now, once again, this is done by design. Cursor sharing is effectively saying, if you could build an SQL that had a bind variable in it, then surely you could have dealt with this as well. The reason this particular customer 
brought this issue up is they actually had a engine which was building SQLs, which started with a template that looks something like this with some binds and it added this dynamically. And that's why they wanted cursor sharing because they wanted this dynamic stuff to be replaced with the bind. Unfortunately, when Peel SQL builds a dynamic piece of SQL that also contains a bind, cursor sharing says, well, you built this SQL. If you can build it with a bind, you could replace that one with a bind yourself. That's the mindset of cursor sharing and therefore it leaves it alone. Even if you break it down into its most fundamental parts and try to do it with DBMS SQL, so you're doing the pars separately, et cetera, you still see the same thing. Find me seven, once again, dynamic SQL that already contains a bind will not be touched by cursor sharing. As we saw, PL SQL is special. Really, this is about understanding the 8i and 9i history. When cursor sharing came along, back in 8i, it was obviously to handle the issue of replacing literals. But back in 8i, we didn't have bind variable peaking, we didn't have adaptive cursor sharing. If you had a bind variable in a SQL statement, then that would introduce potential challenges to the optimizer. It had to optimize without knowing what the value of the bind variable was. Bind peaking didn't come along till later. So back in 8i when cursor sharing came along, it was very, very defensive. It said, if you can see a bind variable in there and a literal, I don't want to replace that literal because you've probably coded that deliberately to give the optimizer the best information you can. Its interpretation was you had a bind variable in there anyway. So you obviously could have replaced this literal with a bind variable. You obviously opted, chose not to explicitly. Therefore, you're trying to pass this literal to the optimizer to give it the best information for the optimizer. That's why it said, I wouldn't want to replace that literal because you've probably kept it deliberately. Version 9a came along where we did have bind peaking coming along. But once again, with bind peaking even, we had that issue of if you multiply parse the same statement, then bind peaking only looked at the first uh, value of the bind variable once. Once again, cursor sharing saying, if I replace with the bind variable, then you're pr I'm probably robbing you of the literal that you wanted to send to the optimizer. So it's only when Oracle 11 came along with adaptive cursor sharing, where we now have a far better view of being able to dig inside bind variables, pass relevant information to the optimizer, that it would make sense to actually go ahead and replace literals with bind variables and still have that confidence that it's not going to harm the execution plan. But cursor sharing has that legacy of being back from 8i days where we didn't want to replace literals unless we absolutely had to because it was a good chance it would rob the optimizer of vital information. So hopefully that makes sense as to where cursor sharing sits. Thanks.